what's going on guys and in this video i'm going to teach you how you can hack into a windows machine using a vulnerability through smb let's get into the video <laughs> So I just want to give you guys a quick rundown of exactly how this is going to work. I'm kind of a visual guy, so maybe this will help somebody else um, kind of visualize it before we get into it more. Uh, this is going to be the Linux machine that we're attacking from. It's going to be attacking this vulnerable machine here. This machine is going to be vulnerable to something called MS-17. What we're going to use in Linux is called Metasploit. Metasploit is in a framework that is used for sending out exploit to target devices. Once we're able to get Metasploit up and running, we're going to use it to send a, an attack to this vulnerable machine, which is going to create us a backdoor, as you'll see coming up in the video. So the first thing that we need to do is first identify that the attack machine is on the network and we're able to talk to it. So the next thing that we want to do, we want to run an Nmap scam. Nmap is going to check to see if there's any vulnerabilities with this script here to this machine in particular. Now, as this is running, I just want to note, uh, for those who are not familiar with MAP, go ahead and drop down in the comments. Um, if there's something that you want to learn more about, I will make an entire video about Nmap and the tool and the ways that it can be used. So now we can see that there is a clear vulnerability um, called MS-17, which is a critical remote execution vulnerability. So a remote execution vulnerability in simple terms means that an attacker can gain access to this machine and type in any type of remote code that they want to and that can potentially infiltrate the network and cause major outages across the network. In cybersecurity, remote code execution is probably one of the worst vulnerabilities. Um, and this is something that if you are in the field and you see a uh, server or a end user's device is vulnerable to a remote code execution, it is highly, highly important that this device is brought to remediation through some type of patching. I just want to stop the video just for one second to say, hey guys, if you like this kind of content, this hacking content and the cybersecurity content, just go ahead and drop a uh, comment down below. Let me know what you like most about uh, this topic and uh, something that you want to see in the future, as well as hit the subscribe button and the like button and the notification uh, bell so then you can get a notification when I drop a new video. Thanks guys. So what we're going to use now is an amazing platform that's usually pre-installed on all, all Kali Linux as well as any type of uh, Ubuntu's or powered OS um, and it's called Metasploit. Metasploit's a great tool to be able to send malicious packets to devices that are potentially um, in, uh, vulnerable to said packets. Now, I do want to make a disclaimer that you should never ever try to attack or perform any type of exploitation on a device that you do not have permission to do so on. Um, that's very important to note, um, and you do need to be wary of that, that you are uh, attacking a machine that you do have the permission to use. So now what we're going to do with Metasploit is take that vulnerability that we just seen in our MMAP scan, and we're going to launch the Metasploit framework. And once we do this, we're going to hope to gain a meter preter session, and we'll see if that works out as we want to in the upcoming few minutes here. But let me tell you, the meter preter is an awesome tool that allows us to carry out certain commands that we otherwise would not be able to carry out if we were through a command line of a Windows machine. Um, meter preter is going to create a session for us that we can carry out these commands um, over that platform in itself. It's awesome. I love it. And you guys are going to see how much I love it and why I love it coming up right here. So to start Metasploit, we're just going to do an MSF console and that's going to start the framework and you'll see that it will um, give us some fancy little uh, icons here, which is always cool. Now we're going to do a search MS17 
because that was the vulnerability. And we see here number eight is the exploit that we want to use. So we just do a use eight and that's going to default our payload. Um, if you want a different payload, you can choose a different payload. For this instance, we don't. A show options is going to give us the required parameters that need to be um, placed within this exploit in order for it to work. So our host is going to be the target machine. L host is the listening machine, which is the machine that you're attacking from. So we're going to set the R host to the attack machine. So we're going to set the R host to the vulnerable machine that we are targeting. Now we'll be able to do a show options again. And it just puts our uh, target machine right in there just like that. Um, and we're going to do an exploit now um, by just typing in the exploit command. This is going to target that SMB version 1 that is vulnerable. And it's going to create that meter predictor session here as we were talking about before. So we're in. Now we're going to do a PWD. And when we do that PWD, it's going to pull up that we're in the Windows System 32. So we're in guys, we just hacked our way into a Windows machine um, and it was with a few simple um, but complicated steps if you've never done this before. Um, so it's pretty awesome and uh, let's see what else we can do now that we're inside of this Windows machine. So what we're gonna do here in this instance is do a hash dump. The hash dump is going to pull the list of the users. So we have the administrator and the guest, but then look, we have a user named John. Let's see what John's doing. John the Ripper is an amazing tool. It's a password cracking tool that you can use to gain access to uh, usernames and passwords in uh, machines. And how we do that is typing in John and then the hash file that we're going to create followed by the format and the word list. Um, this is going to enable us to take that hash and uh, um, pull up their password. I'm going to do an echo. For those of you that don't know, echo just simply means that you want to, whatever you're about to voice out through the terminal, that is what they're going to take that information and do something with it. So that's what echo means in Linux. Then we want to put that hash there and then we're going to do a double arrow to the right. Double arrow to the right just simply means take this echoed uh, form of text that you have simply put into the terminal and I want you to put that into a file that I'm going to name here. So before we run out the command, we're going to have to CD to the desktop and then we're going to create the file from the desktop. And just like that, how awesome is that? Here's our file. We just created it. It's on the desktop. We pull it up and we can see our hash. So it's good to note that not everybody's uh, Linux instance is going to have your word lists, um, common word lists in the same um, folders. So don't go exactly off of this video if you're trying this out yourself. Make sure that you're going into your file system and checking to see where your pre-downloaded word lists are. You can also get them off the web if you uh, want to do it that way too. If there are new and improved word lists, which there always are, you can simply download them and just pull them and then put them into the command for John the Ripper. We're going to do a John and then the file name, and then the format that we're going under for this command, which is gonna be the NT format. And then we have to put the word list along with where the file is located for said word list. As you can see here, it's located user share word list. So we're gonna go ahead and just type that out here. Now, once we run this command, John the Ripper is gonna do its magic. And we're going to hopefully pull up a password and a username. And just like that, guys, look at this, a password and a username.
How awesome is that? With a few quick steps in John the Ripper, you have yourself a username and a password um, for that user account, which you can go on to do all types of other uh, malicious things. Um, and this is just a point to why you should ensure that you are running the latest uh, versions and you have the latest patches on your machines. This device was vulnerable to server message block version one um, that should be patched by now, and it was not. So it was able to be easily hacked. So guys, I hope you love this video. Um, and I, I love doing this kind of stuff. I mean, uh, the fact that I get to just upload it and, you know, make it enjoyable for you and teach you some new things is the best part of it for me. Um, but this stuff's just fun. I, I'll do this all day if I could. Um, so what I'm going to do in the next coming up videos is going to be um, more hacking stuff just like this. Um, and I hope you guys love this content. And uh, I hope that you uh, continue to want to see more videos. And I truly do enjoy everybody who comments and likes and um, just put your questions out there even uh, that I could hopefully try to help you. Um, the whole point of this channel is to educate and teach um, people that are in the industry or wanting to get into this industry and that just need some help. Um, that's what I'm here for. And thanks again, guys. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.